Hi, my name is Ryan Anderson. I'm one of the deacons here at Ninth and Old Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. Today we're going to be in Psalm 14, and I'll go ahead and read it. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They all are corrupt. They have committed abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all the workers of wickedness not know? Who will eat up the people as they eat bread? And do not call upon the Lord? They are in great dread, for God is with the generation. Would you put to shame the counsel of the afflicted? But the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his captive people, Jacob will rejoice, Israel will will be glad. My friend uh, Joe McAloon in our men's Bible study said the other day, and uh, I'm quoting him here, we live in a divided world. And if you think about it, we really do. We live in a divided world. We're divided by race. We're divided by uh, socioeconomic status. We're divided by our beliefs, uh, whether it be political or our faith beliefs. We are divided and we live in a divided world world. And what's interesting about the division that we see in our world, it is counterintuitive to what we see, the governing philosophy that, we, that, that, that people tend to believe in and, and, and follow. It's humanism, and it, it, which basically says that everyone is good and that there's more that unites us than what divides us. And we see that and many of us give it a scent and believe in it and follow it intellectually. And then we read a passage like Psalm 14, which goes against the grain of how we would naturally think or how we would want to think even. And, and we're puzzled and we're challenged. And it's, it's a passage that, that gives us pause as Christians. How do we reconcile these two ideals? Well, there are many who would say you cannot reconcile them, but I think I'm going to make everybody upset and say that we can. The first way I'm going to do this is by acknowledging something, and that it is very important to distinguish, to distinguish between what is being good and what is being loved. There's a huge difference between goodness and being loved. I don't need to go much into illustrating this, if you have been a child of somebody else, you understand what it means to wrong somebody and be forgiven. And if you are a parent of a child, you understand what it means to be wronged and then also forgive. Then in fact, the goodness that we see in this world, the, the love, the charity, the kindness, the things that, that we would ascribe to, uh, uh, whether you're a humanist or just a regular person, that good that we think we see is simply a remnant of the fingerprint of God when he created us in the womb. We do see good, but good is only a matter of perspective. And that's the second thing, is that good is a matter of perspective. If we were all to try to swim around the world in one stop, some of us would be closer to Katie Ledecky. Other of us would be closer to Jack Black. But none of us are going to make it all around the world. Notice what God says here in his word. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of man. Goodness in our perspective will always fall short of God's standard. No matter how good you are, whether you're Adolf Hitler or whether you're closer to Mother Teresa, you will fall short short of God's perfect standard. Humanists will say that there's more that unites us than what divides us. I agree with you. There is. But what unites us is not our goodness. What unites us is our brokenness. What unites us is our universal need of a Savior. 
the pain that we feel, either that we caused by our own actions or were caused by somebody's actions against us, they're real. And there's a real punishment for both. And that will fall short. And that will come face to face with an almighty God. And we will have to give an account. But just as the people of Israel hoped in the Lord, we also hope in the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, who paid the penalty for us all. So if you're listening to this today and you don't know the Lord, I pray that you will come to know him. And if you're listening to this today and you do know the Lord, I pray that you would know him better and share it with someone who needs to hear. Thank you and God bless you.